last time. We'll take a few minutes to, to take a look at it. I don't think I was hitting on all cylinders on Monday, as, as they say. So therefore, there's a few things that I want to be sure to point out that I may have missed. And we'll use that as a starting point to, to start talking about um, more examples of how we can control the layout using CSS. And maybe talk about it in a little bit more formal terms, if, if formal is the right word. All right. At any rate, the layout we did last time and we really only made one tiny modification to the HTML, and that is we added a container div, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. <clears throat> but the example we did last time, the big benefit that it had is that if you notice, <coughs> it, it is not as rigid as the other one. It, it, the, 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 the appearance of the page changes a bit depending on the size of the window. And again, informally the, you could call that a jello-like layout. I did change the colors a little bit from Monday's example because I didn't like the grays with the, with the orange. But at any rate, notice as we resize it, the area on around our content gets smaller or bigger. All right. So there's a little bit of, of wiggle to it. Now, a few things I want to point out. First of all, as I mentioned before, the one change that I made from the previous layout is I added a container div. All right. And a container div I went uh, goes around really all the content on the page. That's something that's nice to have even if you don't do anything with it. So oftentimes when I create a page, even if I'm not using it in the style, um, I'll put it there just in case I want to use it in the style at some later point. All right. So I could have put that in from the start. I could have gone back. Uh, I could have gone uh, when I created the first template that we made using fixed layouts, and I could have put that container div in there. Um, but it might have been confusing at the time, so I, I omitted it. Now it does have a purpose because it wraps around everything and then we can apply styles to it. And if we look at the style sheet for this, we'll see that if we look closely at this, again we have our style for our container div down here. We give it a width. The margin 0px auto is what uh, allows it to be centered. So that's sort of the, the secret recipe for centering something. Um, centering within something. Um, notice that none of the other divs, in fact none of the divs really, even including the container div, we, do we really specify anything about the position of it? All right. But because the banner, the nav, and the content div are all part of the container div, they're all inside the container div, they sort of move with the container div. All right. Um, this really is just an extension of the idea that we had at the very beginning of the course where we used, uh, we didn't use divs at the time, but we used paragraphs and other things, where the layout is what is called a flow layout, where you have the first thing, the second thing, the third thing, right down the line. All right, if you remember your first lab assignments where you had H1s and paragraphs, H1s and paragraphs, all right, they flow just one after another. Here, the same thing is happening, except we're not flowing, the, the flow isn't within the entire page, the flow is within that container div. So that banner appears, then the navigation appears, then the content appears. And I don't have to give a position to any of those. I don't have to put a certain position associated with the banner, a certain position associated with the uh, navigation, and a certain position associated with the content because they simply flow into place. 
one right after the other. And that's an important lesson when using CSS. And that is to be careful not to micromanage the layout and micromanage the CSS. We all may have heard uh, the phrase micromanage before, you know, where a boss looks at every single detail that you do and, 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 uh, and focuses on it. It's almost the same thing with CSS. You don't want to, in CSS, necessarily worry about getting the exact uh, or, or controlling every aspect of the layout because the flow will do some of that for you. The fact that these things just flowed right in place is a good thing and it, and it achieved what we wanted it to do. Now we could have done a similar thing by putting positions on these, but it really wouldn't be any better than uh, just using the flow to do that. So the one lesson from this is, you know, the, the notion of a container, the notion of being able to center that container on the page, then the notion of items, if you don't give a position, flow uh, just in their natural order, just as they did from the first um, homework that we did. Now, we might want to sort of combine a couple of things that we've done so far. And let's say this is the layout that we want to achieve. We want to achieve the layout that's sort of a cross between what we did here and what we did in our first example. That is, if you remember our first example, we had a banner, a navigation, and a content, but those were glued down, right? That was this example. We have our banner, we have our navigation, we have our content, but those are glued down and they don't move no matter what we do to the window size. Our second example, we had a container div that was centered within the window that expanded and contracted, or rather this space, we didn't, we, we set this as an absolute amount, but the center space expanded and contracted based on how much space was available on the window. So that's a little, a uh, little less rigid. It's more adaptable to the, the window and, and the environment that it, it's living in. Let's say we want to combine these two into what we're, gonna, what we're gonna ultimately try to get to today. And that is where we have a container that has a nav and has a content area, but also the container div is centered, and as we expand and contract the window, that space gets bigger and smaller. So we really sort of want the best of both worlds in this one. We want, uh, we want the, the, the three section layout, the side-by-side -side navigation and content, but we also want the, the resizability of the, uh, of the border that goes around uh, the content area. That's going to ultimately be our goal. All right? That's what we're going to shoot for. Uh, before we do that, though, um, we're going to take uh, a dive into looking at the different ways that we can control the position of something. All right? Because in this example, we didn't control the position at all within that container div. In fact, we didn't really control the position of the container div either. So in this example, we used the flow layout the whole way through. In other words, things just flowed one right after another. In this one, we controlled it, but we used absolute positioning. All right? That's not going to work in this case, because we don't always want this to be in the exact same space. Right? We want it to move based on how big the window is. 
So we can't use absolute positioning in this case. All right. So what we're going to have to do is sort of do something that we haven't done before. All right. And that is have the positioning of these things based not on the absolute position of the window, but based on other elements of the page. In other words, we want this one to be lined up with this, you know, at the top, maybe with a little bit of a margin or whatever. We want this to be underneath this, and we want this to be positioned here. But we want those positions to adjust themselves as they get bigger or smaller. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to examine or re-examine flow layouts, absolute position. We're going to introduce three other concepts, all right? Relative position, float, and fixed position. So today we may get to our final goal, we might not, but it, we'll, we'll, we'll cover some real uh, important building blocks as far as controlling the layout of the page. So, I'm just going to open up an example page. And I'm going to start out, and in this example, I'm going to keep my style sheet in with the HTML code simply for the ease of being able to see both of them at the same time. I'm going to start out by putting a couple of paragraphs in. I'm sorry, a couple of divs in. It would work the same with paragraphs. That we're not controlling the position of at all. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to put the style in. And I'm just going to make these visible by giving them a height and a width and a, a color. But I'm not going to say anything about the position of them. So I'm going to say flow one has a position of, or doesn't have a position, uh, has a background color of black. A color of white. I'm not going to say anything about the position of that one. Flow 2 and I'll put in each one just a little bit of content indicating which which div they are just so that we can see something on the page. Now this one shouldn't be too unexpected. It should do exactly what we would expect. All right. Flow one and flow two. All right. 
they're positioned right underneath each other. They're in the flow, all right, if you will. All right. Which, um, why is there space between them? Again, because there's default margins uh, associated with these elements, default margins and default paddings. If we did not want them to be right on top, uh, or if we didn't want them to be a gap, we could remove the margins and we could remove the paddings, and then they would, uh, they would run up uh, right against each other. All right. Remember, there's always the combination of what you do via your CSS code and what the browser defaults are. So I didn't address the margin, so the browser default for margins take effect. All right. So the other thing that we had in here is we had an absolute position. Now with these, I'm going to give them a position of absolute. And I'll just for laughs, I'll give one a top of zero pixels, a left of zero pixels. Yeah, let's change that a little bit. Let's make a, a top of 30 pixels, a left of 100 pixels. Position absolute. And the next one we'll put top of 300, left 500. All right. Now let's look at this. Okay. Now notice what happened. All right. What happened is the flow is unaltered. All right. When you give something an absolute position, that sort of takes it out of the flow. All right? So, therefore, the flow starts at the top of the page. So, if I absolutely position something, and then I have other things that do not have an absolute position, or don't have any positioning on them, they're going to overlap. All right? Because, if we notice here, these two don't have a position, these two do. So these two get glued down in their respective positions. All right. These two get glued down in their respective positions. These two follow the flow from the top of the page. Now it doesn't matter what order I put these divs in. In other words, I could switch these around and it would still look the same. All right. Why? Because we have essentially two sorts of layouts going on at the same time. All right. We have two divs that we're using an absolute positioning scheme for, and we are using we have two divs that we're using the flow layout scheme for, and those really um, are, are causing us problems unless we're being careful. All right. They're causing us problems because two we're pinning down exactly in, in, a, in a specific position. One, uh, 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 the, the two that we're using the position absolute, we're gluing down in a specific position. The other two, we're just starting at the top of the page and have them go down in order. All right? 
So that's not really, uh, you know, uh, that, that's something to be careful for, not mixing the absolute and the flow, because you're kind of prone to having issues like this. All right, let's throw into the mix, and this is a cool one, by the way, although it doesn't work in every browser, it doesn't work in some of the versions of Internet Explorer, let's throw in a position of fixed. All right, there's our one thing that has a position of fixed. Notice what happens if we scroll the page. It doesn't scroll with the rest of the page. It stays fixed. So, I guess if we're going to formally describe that, we would say absolute position is with respect to the top of the document. Fixed position is with respect to the top of the browser window. And therefore, fixed does not get affected when you scroll. And um, absolute does get affected when you scroll. Now, what might fixed be good to use for? What would be an example of, of something you might use fixed for? Can you manipulate it one more time? So yeah. Fixed stays still. The Um, how, where do you want me to, to... Um, yeah, just scroll the bar here and stay in the zero. Yeah. Fix stays put. Fix is in relation to the browser window. Absolute position is with respect to the top of the document. So as the document scrolls, absolute will move a little bit, whereas fixed is glued down in relation to the window. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's take a quick diversion here and do this. All right, let's say we have long content. We got a lot of stuff on our page. Let's give it a height of 2,000 pixels. And let's start out making the navigation absolute.
Okay. Okay. There's our nav, there's our content. As we scroll down, we lose the navigation. All right? As we scroll down, we lose the navigation. So, let's give them each a width, too. So, what we could do is instead, we could give that a position fixed. And then, as we scroll down the page, that navigation stays put. All right? Now, Interesting, interesting thing here, we could actually do this a couple different ways, all right? Um, and, and you'll probably hear me say that a million times through the discussion of CSS layout because almost anything in CSS layout, you have options of how you can do it. Maybe a more simpler way of doing this would be simply to, instead of giving this guy a position, We could let it stay in the flow, and we could simply give it a margin left of 100 pixels, let's say. And again, we have sort of the same effect. All right. So fixed is good for something like that. If there's something that you want to appear on your page all the time. Now it could be your banner, all right? It could be your copyright notice at the bottom of the page. It could be your navigation. But anything that you want to be sure is visible on the page all the time, you could do as fixed. Now, in older browsers, let's see what version of IE we have here. I know in some older versions of Internet Explorer, the position fix doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. Yeah, well, this one it does. All right. But in older versions of IE, it doesn't. But sort of the good news there is it acts as though it's absolute. So it's really not that big of a deal. Um, and, and, and you just you, you lose that little bit of a benefit, but um, it doesn't, um, doesn't hurt it. In terms of web development, that's called uh, degrading gracefully. In other words, if a feature isn't implemented, uh, at least it, it's still workable. It doesn't blow up on you. So that's fixed. And that, again, can be done and used very effectively um, in certain instances. Now, the next thing that we're going to, to look at is relative positioning. All right? Now, relative positioning says... Let's see what we have here. To be honest, I'm mixing so many things in here that you don't normally mix together. I might be a little surprised with what the result is. So. We'll see. Instead of position uh, absolute, I'm going to say position relative. Make sure we save it and look at it. That's down there. All right. 
How do you figure it being down there? Well, whenever we say something as a position of relative, when, in fact, whenever we say anything is relative, we mean in comparison to something else. All right? In this case, Relative is relative to the last thing that had a position defined. So if you notice, the relative position doesn't appear after the flow. It appears after absolute 2. Why is that? Because absolute 2 was the last thing that we assigned a position to. And when we say relative, we mean that it's going to be 300 from the top of where it normally otherwise would be. In other words, if I say relative 0, 0, okay, there's a puzzler do this. All right. I, I stand corrected. It, it was based on the, on the flow element. All right. I was mistaken. It wasn't based on this one. It was based on the flow. So relative means compared to where it otherwise would fit in. All right. So I thought it was doing it based on the absolute. I'm mistaken. It's whatever the last item previous to it was. So what this means is if I do rel uh, relative position of 0, 0, that's the same as not giving any position at all. And it will simply be in the flow in this case. If I were to put it after the absolute, it would be, um, well, it probably still would go with the flow. We could experiment with that. But if I specify I want it to be 10 pixels and left of 100, what it will do is it will push it down 10 from where it should be and left of 100 of where it should be. So it should end up somewhere over here. There we go. Right about over there. And it's underneath that one. Now, keep in mind this is confusing to me because we're mixing a lot of things that we otherwise shouldn't mix. All right? We're mixing really all the different layouts in one thing. Um, so relative is, is based on the last element um, in the flow. So if I switch this around, and I put the flow ones up here, it shouldn't affect the page. And sure enough, it doesn't. Because again, those absolute ones are taken out of the flow. So where we say relative, it's relative to the last thing that's in the flow. Okay. Now, what does this have to do with achieving our goal? All right. If you remember what our goal was, our goal was to... have a layout that looked like this. All right? This is easy to do, right? We could do, accomplish this one. Um, we've already did that one when we did this layout. This one isn't going to be hard, right? We just set the width of it uh, instead of making it, set the width and height of it. So instead of making it... Um, you know, go long, we'll make it oriented vertically. This one's going to be the one that's going to be problematic and the one that we're going to need to use relative positioning for. So, let's go in and let's make a copy 
of this. And let's go in and let's make a couple of the changes. The nav, we will give it a width of a hundred px, let's say. We're going to make, we're going to not make the, uh, we're not going to make the LIs inline. We're going to make them black so that they stack vertically. And what we have is, and let's see. All right, so there's our nav. The only problem is that content area is underneath it. All right. Why is the content area underneath it? Can someone explain to me? It's underneath it because we haven't given anything a position. All right. So it's just following the flow of one thing after another. All right. So. The banner is on the top of the page. The navigation is underneath it. The content will be underneath that. Now, what do we want to do? We don't want it here. We want it up here. So, if normally it appears here, all right, and we want it to be up here, that's a case where we want to use a relative position. We want to move this a hundred over from the left of where it normally should be, and we want to move it up, I don't know, 300 pixels maybe? So that will be a negative 300. So, what I can do for the content is I can say position relative left 100 pixels, that means shove it over to the left 100 pixels further than it would normally be. Top, negative 300 pixels, let's say. Did something wrong. Maybe negative 200 pixels. All right, we're kind of approximately getting in the right spot. We would want to then change the width of this so that it fits in the container. So I might say something like width 600 pixels. All right, so we've approximately gotten the look that we wanted to. And again, we can fiddle with it to make it look exact but uh, we've achieved what we wanted to. Let's summarize. Flow simply means one after another. 
Absolute means it's going to be nailed down on the page from the, uh, uh, in that position using as the starting point the top of the document. All right? And because it's the top of the document, that means if we scroll the document, something with the position of absolute is going to move. All right? Fixed is another option. Whereas fixed says, all right, nail this down in this position, but not relative to the top of the document, but relative to the top of the window, which means that it will not move if you scroll the document. It will always stay that location from the top of the window, from the top and left of the window. Lastly, we have relative position, which Initially, I botched, and I said it's based on the previous absolute position. That's wrong. The more I think about it, that was, that was a very bad conclusion to come to. It's based on the previous thing in the flow. So, it'll be relative to the position of the previous thing in the flow. And relative to where it would, uh, another way of saying it is relative to where it would otherwise be positioned if um, there was no position to it. In other words, where it would normally appear in the flow. So in this case, normally this content area would appear down here in the flow. By putting in a relative position, we can push it over and push it up. Any questions um, about that? Now, thing to keep in mind, as I pointed out, these examples, these examples are confusing, again, as I said, even to me, because it's mixing a lot of things that don't necessarily mix well together. All right? So you do sort of have to be careful of what you're going to use. Using absolute lends itself to using absolute for most of your main sections, right? Now, certainly within a section, you can use a flow layout. But for your main sections of the page, if you're going to use absolute, you're probably going to want to use absolute for just about everything. All right? Um, if you're going to use the flow layout, you can, use the abs uh, you can use the relative position to sort of push things a little bit different place than they otherwise would normally appear. The fix is good for keeping something always on your window in a certain spot, no matter how you scroll, either vertically or horizontally. All right, there's one more thing to talk about. Well, there's one more big thing to talk about as far as positioning goes. We'll leave that until next week, and that is floating stuff. We'll talk about floating stuff next week. And again, when you start adding that into the mix of all these other things, this is where layout does get to be very confusing, and it's probably the most involved thing with CSS. Now, your project requirements are going to be coming due fairly soon. A um, couple weeks-ish, if I am not mistaken, two and a half weeks maybe, something on that, two and a half, three weeks at the most. My suggestion is, is that you bring your materials for your project to class, wherever you are in, in the project, because we're likely to have some time for us to sit down and talk about where you're at on the project and what progress you've made, what hurdles you're encountering, uh, et cetera. So be sure that you have it with you in a thumb drive or you can use something like Dropbox, not Angel's Dropbox, but the software application Dropbox to keep stuff up there and so on. So be sure you have that with you and be prepared to discuss it. Uh, we may have a work day to work just on the project at some point, again, depending on time. So that puts us here. Uh, the next big thing that we'll talk about will be float. And floats really allow us to do a, a completely liquid layout where things really conform themselves to the size of the window with really no rigidity at all. Really a very flexible form of layout. Again, none of these are superior techniques to the other, but these are all possibilities of what you can do uh, to achieve the layout that you want. All right, we'll see you up in lab.